um, morning moon. Since you have a, a long story, but you, you've been doing this for some time now, kind of what do you see as the future? And kind of what are the next steps in your story? And I'll let you add it. Thank you. Thanks. Well, my story starts with being completely colorblind, so I was born completely colorblind. I've never seen blue, yellow, pink. Uh, so when I realized I couldn't see color, um, I tried to ignore color. But it was impossible to ignore color existence because people who see color keep mentioning it every single day. In daily elements like red cross, pink pamphlet, green piece, uh, yellow somebody, Bluetooth, green card. Yellow Pages, Blue Cheese, James Brown is in his uh, last name, or Greenland. So every single day I would hear the name of a color, so it was impossible to ignore it. Also when color is used as a code, it could be confusing sometimes. Hot water and cold water is a code expressed through color codes. Also maps use a lot of color codes. This is my way. If I go to Tokyo, I can get this little bus, because some of them really, really depend on color perception. Um, also, when I was trying to share exactly the same flag to me, or in daily conversations like, have you seen a man with ginger hair, blue eyes, and dressed in pink? I would have no idea, because the only information I get here is that the man has eyes, that he has hair, and that he's not naked, basically. So, the reason why I wanted to sense color is because I wanted to have this social element in my life. So, I tried to create a system that would allow me to perceive color. And I was really interested in what Isaac Newton created centuries ago. He thought that there was a relationship between color and sound. And he was right. There is a relationship between color and sound. They're both frequencies. Color is a light frequency, and sound is an audible frequency. So 20 years ago, I tried to transform this theory into practice, and I created with a friend, Adam Montagna, this project, which is basically a system that suddenly allowed me to hear the vibrations of color. So the system picked up the frequency of the color in front of me, it slowed down the frequency until I was able to hear it. So I learned the sound of color, I learned the sound of red, the sound of orange, and then when I was looking at an object, if I heard the sound, I knew it was blue or pink or yellow. So these are the main colors in the visual spectrum. But there's many more colors that are invisible that the human eye cannot sense, like infrared and ultraviolet. Technology can sense these colors, but the human eye can't. Uh, but I decided to also include these invisible colors in the system, and then suddenly I was able to sense infrareds and ultraviolets as well. Sensing uh, ultraviolets uh, allows me to go out in the street, and then if I sense high levels of ultraviolet, I avoid the sun because it's a color that can damage your skin. Sensing infrared allows me to go into a space, into a room, or into a shop, and tell if the alarms are on or off. So if I sense infrared, the alarms are on, because the movement detectors are on. If they're off, then there's no infrared perception. So it allows me to tell if the alarms are on or off in banks as well. So it gives me a new perception and a new ability in this case. Now the system 20 years ago was it wasn't very comfortable, it was a wearable, uh, but I didn't want to wear a stance. I wanted the system to become a new body part. So I designed an antenna, which is basically this one, and then I designed a small chip so it would be implanted in my head. So I tried to find a doctor going to do the surgery, and then finally I found one, and the antenna was drilled for that, and then the implant was inside this, this bone. So it's a chip that depending on the vibration in front of me, it vibrates. So if there's red, the vibration of red vibrates inside my head, and then I hear the vibration of red. There's also another implant, which is a Bluetooth connection that allows me to connect to the internet. And this also allows me to sense colors from other parts of the world. So basically, the internet allows me to share the sense of colors. So people can send colors to my head. So I can be here where people can share uh, a sunset on Australia or the colors of the supermarket in the UN. So I see this as the future of the internet, how the internet can be used not only as a communication system or as a tool, but also as a sensory extension or as a sense itself. The internet connection also allows me to connect to NASA's International Space Station and then I can sense colors from space. So I also see this as a form 
normal exploring space without having to physically go to space. If you want to explore space, you can go to space or you can send your senses to space. Uh, so I see this as becoming sense-pronal as a new form of exploring uh, space. In that case, I explore the colors of space. And when I do this, I sense colors that I never sense here because of my levels of ultraviolet and never go through uh, the atmosphere. So it allows me to explore colors that I never sense here in the earth. Now, having internet connection in the body has one main risk is that I can be physically active. So in order to avoid this, uh, I create a system now that you can only connect to my head via the blockchain. So now you don't just send cards to my head, you can do it by an NFT. So this is the safest way, I think, to connect our bodies to the internet. We will never have an impact in the future that has internet connection. I think the safest way of connecting will be via an NFT. Now this NFT has a one block of content, and when you unlock the content, you have the link to the hand. So now this is, is, a, is a, uh, an hackable, uh, or it's really hard to find a way to hack this system. So I call this a cyborgism. It's a creating new senses, new organs, and designing our perception of reality. The word cyborg comes from two words, cybernetic organisms. So I feel I'm a cybernetic organism because I'm, I'm both organic and also cybernetic. The word was created by Manfred Kleins. He thought there was a new word to differentiate cyborgs from bionics. A bionic human is someone whose body has been modified by electronics. A mechatronic person is someone whose body has been modified by mechanic parts. <clears throat> but then a cyborg is someone whose body and mind has been modified by electronics. So uh, the difference between a cyborg and a bionic human is that the cyborg find someone whose brain has also been modified by electronics. There are also psychological cycles, people whose body has not been modified by electronics, but that their brain has been modified by electronics. These are psychological cycles. Most of you are probably psychological cycles. If you notice this in language, if you say, I'm running out of battery, instead of saying my mobile phone is running out of battery, this is already a clear sign that you are talking about in first person, and the divine implying that technology is also you if you are running out of battery. So, maybe a psychological cycle is something that is already mainstream, many people are psychologically merged with technology, and merging physically with technology is not such a uh, far away step. This is my brain now. I don't feel the difference between software and my brain anymore. That's why I also define myself as a cyborg. And this is why I try to explain this new thing about me. Because they didn't allow me to renew my passport because they said that uh, electronic equipment is not allowed on passport photos. I went back to the end that is not an electronic equipment or the new body part, and then I identify as a cyborg, and then they didn't accept this. So we came a battle with the UK passport office in the last few months, and in the end they accepted me that I'm as a body part, and they accepted my uh, cyborg definition. They allowed me to obtain the password in 2004 with the idea. This helps a lot of airport security control servers. There's a lot of uh, issues about technology at airports, so it helps a lot. I was in conversations with the Swedish government because the materials that I use to create the antenna are Swedish. So I'm telling them that I am Swedish, because part of my body is Swedish. So I think I should also be allowed to become a Swedish citizen, but they still haven't. So we'll see if they ever do. My sense of color has altered many things. Hearing color means that I can also dress in a way that it sounds good, you know. So I can wear a song or I can dress in C major in F minor. I can design clothes that sounds like specific melodies. I can also now paint a space so that it sounds good. So if I paint a little room, yellow room, sounds C major, so it gives a major tone in the living room. It has also changed the way I can now compose music. I can now compose music by simply looking at different objects, especially vegetables and fruit. They have a lot of colors, so I really enjoy walking around supermarkets because I hear a lot of music in supermarkets. Um, art has also become a 
musical experience. So I can listen to all paintings. I can listen to Picasso, to David, to Miro, all painters and from musical composers. And uh, also I can paint it when I hear. So if I listen to music, I can paint it on a canvas. <clears throat> and this is, for example, version of Queen of the Night, built by Lowe, uh, transposed into music. Food has a lot of colors as well, so I've done some projects uh, with uh, chefs to create a system that allows people to eat songs. So when you go to this restaurant, the food is placed on this plate. This plate has a sensor inside, and it detects the color of the food, and it has a loudspeaker inside, and it allows you to hear the sound of the food. So you can go to this restaurant and ask for some Lady Gaga dessert or whatever reason you want to eat, it's served and then you keep it in the nose until it becomes silent. And the biggest change in this is the way I stand to people, because when I look at someone's face, I can hear their face. So I really try to do the sound of poetry, where I get close to someone's face, I really understand like the eyes, the lips, skin and hair, and then I send them an empty key on their face. One of the first sound poetry I did was of King Charles III. I asked him, if I can listen to his face, and this was his reaction when I asked him. We all sound different. He sounds C major. Uh, Robert De Niro has a melody in his lips because he has different shades of uh, red. Judy Dench has style in hair. Uh, Steve Wozniak has an A in his uh, eyes, a pure note. Um, Macaulay Culkin sounds C major. Um, Bono had very loud glasses here, so we all have a specific soundscape and we all sound different. So basically what I'm saying is that the creation of new senses will create new cultures. I just gave the example of hearing color. This is just one example of a cybernetically created sense. It has outer point perception and has created a culture around this sense. So if you all have your own new sense, it would create new cultures around these senses. There's many senses that we could all have. Uh, many senses already exist in other animals and other species, and there's already people creating new senses and adding them to their body. For example, elephants can sense infrasounds, and this allows elephants to sense earthquakes uh, before they actually happen. So Woodley was created two implants in her feet that allow her to feel the seismic activity in the world. Whenever there's an earthquake, she feels a vibration in her feet. So she's connected to the seismic activity of the world and she calls this the seismic sense. Her feet are also connected to the uh, seismograph on the moon, so she can also, she, she can also sense uh, moonquakes. So whenever there's a, a moonquake, she can also feel the vibration. She's also a sense pronoun because she's using the internet to extend her senses to space. Elephants can also communicate by tapping on the floor. So even if they're very far away, they can talk to each other by tapping on the floor and through infrasound they can communicate. So we did a similar project in Brazil. A tooth was implanted in my mouth and a tooth was implanted in Moon's mouth. Uh, and then whenever I picked, she will receive a vibration in her mouth, and whenever she played, I will receive a vibration in my mouth. We both learned the Morse code, so we were able to communicate uh, from mouth to mouth by clicking and sending words to each other. So it works through bone conduction, that's why we call it a transcendental communication system, and it's a system of communication that will work in space and also on the water because it doesn't make any conduction. And it's very simple uh, system, it actually works through Bluetooth. So it's a Bluetooth tooth that allows you to communicate from mouth to mouth. Echolocation is also a sense that some species have to make feel presence around them. So John, John Deppin has two implants here and in the back that allow him to feel presence around him. This is also very useful for completely blind people. If they want to sense presence around them, they can also use these implants to feel if someone is getting close to them. Magnetoception is something that some animals have to feel if something is magnetic, so we drink the air in them and allows you to feel if something is magnetic. Bioluminescence is uh, a quality that some species have creating light. We created this tooth that when you have it in your mouth, if you drink, you have emergency light in your mouth. So when you open your mouth, you have light. 
I had it for a while, but I had the problem that when I was eating, the light was going to come off all the time, so I had it removed. But we tried to find ways of making it work without the, without the tricking. Sensing by the north is, is also something that many animals can, can feel. They can feel the mark. So if we put a small compass that was implanted at the back of the knee, and then when you face the mark, you feel a pressure or a vibration that tells you where the north is. So this is something that is also useful for people to lose the sense of direction or get disorientated easily. This can easily help to feel where you are without having to use uh, traditional ways of, of, of anchors or, or looking at the sun. You can simply feel where the north is and it will help you orientate easily, especially at, at night. Weather stations can sense weather in a very precise way. Manal de Amos has two weather stations at the south of his head. You can feel the atmospheric pressure, the humidity, and the temperature in a very precise way. So he is literally a weatherman and he can predict the weather. Also, radars can sense speed in a very precise way. So these are earrings. It's not an impact, it's okay? just earrings that allow you to sense movement. Depending on the interval, you can feel the, the exact speed of a moving uh, object. This is also very useful for blind people if they want to feel or sense movement. If you turn them around, you can sense what's behind you, so it gives you a retroception. And so you can feel if someone is getting close to you from behind you. Another side are, uh, uh, this is Paulo Bartini, he has electrodes that allow him to share his uh, heartbeats. As you see, this light. Is his heartbeat uh, live, and his heartbeat is also connected to the internet, so he can send his heart to external elements like lights, lights that go on and off according to his heartbeat, or clocks that also advance to the rhythm of his heart. He uh, has also sold his heartbeat as a work of art, so he's also using energies to connect his body to, to the internet. And the last formula that we're creating is the, the sense of time. It's a point of heat that takes 24 hours to go around the head. So it gives you a sense of time. If you feel the heat here, it means it's 12 o'clock summer time in London. If you feel it here, it's in America. So it will slowly give you a sense of 24 hour cycle. Now, if your brain gets used to it, uh, then you can start creating time illusions. If you want the situation to last longer, you can make the part of the go a bit slower or a bit faster so that you can answer your perceptions of time. So the aim of this project is not to go on time list, but to create time illusions and to bring our minds the theory of time relativity into practice through this uh, new art specifically designed for the sense of time. Now all of these examples use AI in order to create you know, the codes. We do use AI, but they are not AI. They are AS. The difference is that it's an artificial sense, not artificial intelligence. If the antenna was artificial intelligence, it would be giving me the names of colors. But I was not interested in technology giving me intelligence. I didn't want technology to tell me the colors that I have in front. I want the technology to give me a sense. When you merge with an artificial sense, a technology is not giving me intelligence. It's giving me stimuli. And then the intelligence will be created by your brain or not. So there is a clear difference between merging with AI or merging with AS. And this is something that we will see more clearly in the future when there's more people creating artificial senses. Now the reality it creates is not virtual or augmented, but revealed. It's a type of reality that reveals elements that exist already in front of us, but that we could not sense. So now in this room, there's many elements that we cannot sense, but technology could reveal. So that's why we call it revealed reality, because it's a, a way of sensing something that has always been in front of us, but we've never been able to sense that. Like earthquakes or infrasounds or ultraviolets, elements that already exist. Future senses that might change society very deeply are night vision. If we all have night vision, all these lights will be off. All the lights in Qatar at night will be off. So we will have to spend energy creating light in order to see each other. Uh, so it would be a, a good uh, solution for 
for us and also for the planet because we would have to waste so much energy creating artificial light and wind. Also, if we could control our temperature, thermal regulation, like wash, which is good, we would have to use air conditioning when it's hot or heater when it's cold. If you could regulate your temperature, you would decide what temperature you want to have. So instead of changing the temperature around us, we should start thinking of ways of changing the temperature inside us. This would also be beneficial for the environment and also for ourselves. So I think that when these uh, senses start being developed, people will start seeing that maybe changing ourselves and designing ourselves is actually quite ethical because it helps us uh, preserve our surroundings and we won't have to change our surroundings so much if we change. So this is a brief introduction of what it means to become a cyborg. I've had this nightmare for 20 years now. In March, it will be my 20th anniversary. And I've been out in the streets every day since 2004, and I've encountered a lot of social reactions, because the antenna is very visible. And it's been interesting how the reactions have changed in the last 20 years. In 2004, most of the people thought it was a reading light. And they asked me if I could turn on the light. In 2005, people thought it was a flexible microphone. In 2007, people thought it was a hands-free telephone. In 2009, people thought it was a GoPro cut. And they thought I was filming that, and they waved at me, uh, thinking that I, they were being filmed. In 2012, people thought I had something to do with Google Street View, and that I was streaming the streets. In 2014, people thought that I had something to do with Google Glass. In 2015, 15 and 16 children asked if there was some kind of selfie stick attached to my head because there were many types of selfie sticks. In 2016, people shot a Pokemon and they tried to catch me. Social reaction has kept changing. Now people think it's something to do with animal muscles. Reactions keep changing. But what has really uh, shocked is the way interaction has changed and now people have an opinion about technology, whereas 20 years ago, people thought it was just a strange thing. We are getting close to merging physically with technology. There's already many people that are doing it voluntarily. Uh, and this might change society in ways that we, we have not predicted. So this is just a brief introduction and if you have any questions on the app Vidi mele pariyam pottu kadaval mele maratha pottu munvecha kaala nama pinvenchona nama vaalndittirukona artha o vaalka avalo dhan indha ulagam ungitta sollumbodhu o vaalka o kaiyila dhan unga arivu solradhu ungalku kekkalaya o alavukku nee aasa padu indha samudaya ungal amukkumbodhu tannambikiyoda poraadu nu morning moon